Hello, fourth grade, and welcome to lesson four. We're going to continue reading about the, the Midwest. This, this lesson is titled, How Does the Midwest Honor Its Roots While Growing in a Modern Economy? In this lesson, you're going to use your investigative skills to explore how the Midwest is adapted in the modern, in the modern economy while staying connected to its roots. Reading and talking about the changes in traditional Midwestern industries will help you understand the Midwest role in modern economy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to begin with our section on building Mount Rushmore. Now, before we begin reading the actual lesson, we're going to take a look at the information in our blue bars. Read the text and primary source feature. What does Goodson uh, Borglum's writing suggest about why the monument at Mount Rushmore was built? Circle words or phrases that you don't know. Underline details that help you answer the questions who, what, where, when, or why. Then read, what does this text suggest about the purpose of the, of the memorial at Mount Rushmore? What benefits did building the memorial bring? What does Mount Rushmore mean to different groups? Building, the Mount, building Mount Rushmore. In the Black Hills of South Dakota, the carved images of four American presidents look out from the side of Mount Rushmore. South Dakota's state historian wanted to promote tourism in the state while honoring American history. In 1924, he asked the famous sculptor, Gutzon Borglum, to create a design that would match the scale of the monument. Borglum planned to honor four American presidents he thought best stood for democracy. He chose George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. Drilling began in 1927. Workers used dynamite to blast out large sections of the mountain. Jackhammers and chisels carved the features of the faces. The project nearly ended during the Great Depression. President Franklin D. Roosevelt provided federal funding to keep the builders working. He also created the Civilian Conservation Corps. This program helped support the project by building camps and clearing rubble from the, for the carvers. More than 400 men and women worked at the site during the Great Depression. Work ended in 1941, shortly after Gutzon Borglum died. Today, about 3 million tourists visit Mount Rushmore National Memorial each year. It helps the area's economy by providing jobs and encouraging tourism. Not everyone views the monument the same way. To the Sioux, Mount Rushmore represents land taken from them in a broken treaty. The Black Hills are also, sacred, are also a sacred site for the Sioux. In their words, Gutzon Borglum, the purpose of this memorial is to communicate the founding, expansion, preservation, and unification of the United States with colossal statues of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. Workers on Mount Rushmore faced dangerous conditions as they added detail to the faces of the presidents. Now let's go ahead and jump into our graphic organizers. So here we're exploring a problem and solution. So the problem that they gave us was that people of South Dakota needed a way to encourage, encourage tourists to visit their state. The solution that they came up with was the building of the Mount Rushmore Memorial. It created an important tourist attraction for the state and encouraged people to come and visit. Now we're going to read pages 214 to 221 in our research companion, that's your textbook. You're going to use your investigative skills to look for text evidence that tells about the Midwest challenges with growth in the modern, uh, in the modern economy and the solutions Midwesterners came up with. We're going to use this to organize our notes and our ideas. So we're going to find three problems and three solutions. How does the Midwest honor its roots while growing in a modern economy? Midwestern industry. Midwest industries adapt over time. After the Civil War, the steel industry grew because of the, iron rich, the rich iron and coal deposits in the Midwest. The Great Lakes provided a way to transport raw materials. By 1910, the Midwest was the largest producer of steel in the world. With a booming steel business, the automotive industry grew in the Midwest as well. 
by the 1930s, the top four automakers in the country were based in the Midwest. By the 19, uh, during both world wars, automotive factories played an important role by making military vehicles. But by the late 1960s, auto and steel industries started to struggle. Other countries made products more cheaply. American automobile and steel scale sales decreased. Factories closed and many people lost their jobs. The Midwest was called the Rust Belt because of the decline of the automotive and steel industries. To adapt, auto builders and steel producers updated their manufacturing plants. Robotic welding and automation helped lower the cost of making products. Automation is when factories use machines in the manufacturing process instead of people. However, a downside to automation is that people lose jobs when fewer workers are needed. So if we jump back to our graphic organizer, in the first problem, we can put in that the auto and steel industry was struggling because other countries were making products cheaper. And the solution that they came up with was that Midwestern industries added new technology and automation to help lower their costs. So that'll take care of your first section here. Let's go ahead and jump in to our next pages on agricultural change. Early farmers in the Midwest harvested large, harvested just enough food for their families. By the 1850s, agriculture grew as an industry and selling cash crops became an important part of the region's economy. Corn, wheat, and livestock were the main products sold. As the population of the United States increased, so did the need for food. Small farms grew into much larger businesses. Zones of the Midwest that specialized in certain products are called the Corn Belt, Wheat Belt, and Dairy Belt. Farming challenges. Farming is hard work. Early settlers had to do the work by hand or use animals to pull plows. Later, farmers relied on expensive machinery to harvest crops. Some years, the weather would be too wet or too dry. Farmers could not pay their bills when the crops grew poorly. Over the years, some, of the solution, some solutions helped keep the agricultural industry growing. In the late 1800s, some farmers formed cooperatives so that together they could buy and sell in large volumes. Then during the Great Depression, the failing economy combined with years of drought caused farms to fail. The government created programs to assist farmers by stabilizing many agricultural prices. Farms in the dairy belt raised cows that produced milk, cheese, and other dairy products. Innovations in farming. New farming equipment and techniques have made farms more productive with less labor. Modern farming equipment started with John Deere's invention of the steel plow in 1837. Over time, mechanical equipment replaced horses and mules. By 1954, tractors outnumbered work, work animals on the Midwestern farms. Combined harvest, harvester cut, harvesters cut, separate and clean grain crops such as wheat and corn in, in a single step. Tractors and, tractors and combines help commercial farmers work more land than ever before. Irrigation allowed more parts of the region to grow crops. Irrigation is a system of water crops, of, is a system water, irrigation systems water crops automatically, eliminating the need to rely on rain. Irrigation allows dry land to be used for crops. Pipes and canals bring water from fresh water sources to dry fields. Today, farmers rely, farmer, today's farmer relies on modern technology every day. Tractors and harvesters use GPS to com and computer software to determine the most efficient planting and harvesting patterns. Farmers use helicopters or drones to treat crops from the air with chemicals. With new technologies, farmers can adapt to a new economy. All right, so in our second problem over here, we can put down that farming is difficult because of changes in weather, poor crop growth, and economic conditions. Some of the solutions that they came up with that we read about were some of the government programs, the cooperatives, and innovations in technology that helped the farmers overcome those different challenges. A modern tradition. State fairs are a Midwestern tradition. 
They were started in the 1850s as gatherings for farmers and families to celebrate agriculture. Each state fair has a unique aspect for which it's known, but many activities are similar. There are agricultural awards such as, a blue, as blue ribbons for the best livestock or largest vegetable, competitive events such as cow milking or pig racing entertain visitors. State fairs are also modern entertainment events. They have carnival features such as rides, food and games, popular entertainers perform concerts, drawing millions of visitors to the fairgrounds. Candidates running for state or national office often attend state fairs to shake hands with potential voters. State fairs support the economy. Rides and attractions draw people to the fair. Tourism creates new jobs. The largest state fair in the Midwest is in Minnesota. For two weeks each summer, about 2 million people visit the Minnesota State Fair. Each state has its own claim to fame. The Minnesota State Fair is known for baby animals. Illinois has big name concerts. Iowa is known for its butter cow, a life-size sculpture made of butter. Some contests at the state fairs are just for fun. Pigs race around tracks. Cooks and bakers prepare jams, pies, and cakes made with local products. Traditional homemade quilts and crafts are displayed. Farmers show off their pig calling or cow mooing skills. In Minnesota, llamas even dress up for, in costumes for a contest. Competitions for best in show give farmers a chance to present the specialty of their farms. Fruits and vegetables are judged for size, color, and flavor. There are also contests for breeds of livestock, horseback riding, dog training, and more. The Iowa State Fair shows some of the biggest bulls in the world, the record holder weighing more than 3,400 pounds. Food is a top selling item at state fairs. Corn, funnel cakes, and barbecue foods are fair staples. Mo food combinations get more exciting each year. Sweet corn ice cream, chocolate covered bacon, and deep fried pickles are all unique items. Visitors can enjoy almost any food on a stick. Past connections to today's re recreation. With its past rooted in industry and agriculture, the Midwest has grown by adding new trades such as tourism. Chicago, Illinois is the largest city in the Midwest. It is one of America's cultural centers featuring museums, music, and theater. Other Midwest destinations are seeing new growth by offering their own unique attractions. Outdoor recreation. A variety of outdoor activities draw tourists to the Midwest. The geography that first drew settlers to the region allows for many popular activities today. People from all over the world come to the Midwest to enjoy camping, hiking, canoeing, and other outdoor recreation. In the upper Midwest, heavy snow falls each year, which is perfect for winter sports. Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin are popular areas for skiing and snowboarding. In warmer weather, boating is popular on the Great Lakes. Sailboats and motorboats travel the lakes and rivers of the Midwest for hundreds of miles. Canoeing was one of the first forms of transportation used in the Midwest. Native Americans, early Europeans, explorers, and many others explored the region by canoe. People still enjoy canoeing Midwest rivers today. Canoeing is a popular activity on one of the many rivers in the Midwest. Historical destinations. The Midwest honors its roots by preserving local, preserving locations important to its past. Monuments draw visitors to explore the region's history. St. Louis shows its role as, a gate, as the gateway to the West at the Gateway Arch National Park. Across the Mississippi River at the Cahokia Mounds historic site, visitors explore the mounds and learn about the Native Americans who built them. Other parts of history are featured throughout the region. In Minnesota, members of the Ojibwa people host a yearly powwow to share their heritage. Greenfield Village near Detroit honors the great American innovators. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland celebrates the history of, po of this popular style of music. So for our last section in our problem and solutions here, 
our problem was that Midwestern cities were trying to find ways to grow and become a destination, uh, a, a tourist destination for others. And their solution was that cities added tourism and recreation opportunities to their economies to attract visitors. So they had things like state fairs and things that were unique to their area to help more people want to come and visit. All right, let's go into our write about it section over here. It says create an advertisement to get people to visit a city in the Midwest. Share some ways to experience the industrial and agricultural history of the Midwest and describe new innovations a visitor might encounter. Support your advertisement with detail from the text, sketch or describe a graphic a graphic to go with your ad. So you're going to write the advertisement part and then you're going to draw something related to it. So use something that focuses on the industrial and agricultural history that we talked about in the lesson, um, any new technology or innovations and draw something to go with it. Next on the connect the essential question where it says consider problems and solutions. Think about the problems and solutions you wrote about in, in your research. So on the previous page, what are some solutions you think would help the Midwest continue to grow in the modern economy? How does this reflect the spirit of America? So your answers should come from the text. So mention things like industry, agriculture, tourism, uh, how they're trying to preserve some of the history of the land by maintaining some of these historical sites. All of those can go into your area for your essential question. Once you've completed that, make sure you go back and check your spelling and grammar. Make sure you start all your sentences with a capital letter and end with punctuation, and that you use lots of detail in your responses. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.